2 Kings chapter 4, read in verse number 1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere from your neighbors. Empty vessels do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it out into those vessels and set aside the full one. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came, told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil, pay off the mortgage, the Visa card, the American Express, all the student loans, pay your debt, and you and your sons or your family live on the rest. On your way to your seat, look your neighbor in the eye, give them my sermon title, say, Making the Best of a Bad Situation. That's what I want to talk about, making the best of a bad or difficult situation. You may be seated in the presence of God. My brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, all of us sometimes will find ourselves between the devil and the deep blue sea. All of us may sometimes find ourselves between a rock and a hard place. All of us sometimes can find ourselves, although we save and sanctify and Holy Ghost fail, can find ourselves in a difficult or a bad situation. Life has a way of coming at you fast and life has a way of putting you in unpredictable or bad situation. Somebody at the sound of my voice might have received a pink slip this week. Somebody at the sound of my voice went to the government job and found out that the government is closed down. Somebody at the sound of my voice is behind in their mortgage or their rent or their payment and you find yourself in a bad or a difficult situation. Chuck Swindle says that life consists of 5% of what happens to you and 95% of how you respond. While you cannot control the 5%, you still got control of 95%. You can't control the fact that the government has shut down. You can't control the fact that there may be sickness in your body. You can't control the fact that you lost your job. But you can make the best out of a bad situation. You can make the best out of a difficult situation. And really, that's what the text is all about. The text introduces us to a woman who finds herself between the devil and the deep blue sea. A biblical text introduces us to a woman who finds herself between a rock and a hard place. A biblical text introduces us to a woman who knows how to make something out of nothing. Look at this woman's predicament. Look at her situation. Look at her circumstance. And maybe you can glean some principle of how she made the best out of a bad situation. The Bible tells us that she's married to one of the sons of the prophet. It means that he's in seminary about to become a pastor, but he's not there yet. Perhaps he's at Howard School of Divinity, Washington Bible College, or Capitol Seminary. He's in seminary studying. He's a son of the prophet. He's not a prophet yet. In other words, he doesn't have his license or he hasn't been ordained. He's simply in seminary studying to be a preacher. That's good news. It means that she's married to a good man. She's not married to a pimp. She's married to somebody who is going to be a prophet trying to do the work of God. 
God. She's got a good man. And I know it's Women's Day, but you're to thank God for the good men in the house. You're to thank God that all the men who are in the house, come on, there are some great men in the house. Amen. This brother is a hard-working man. He's positive J-O-B. He's negative HIV. He's taking care of his family. He's handling business. And every now and then, women, you ought to give a shout out to the men who don't mind working to take care of their family. The Bible tells us that he's in seminary and he's working to become a prophet. But before he graduates, first lady, before he gets out of seminary, debt comes by and snatches the life out of him. He's on his way into ministry, but Lucretia, before he gets out of seminary and gets called to his first church, he experienced death. And that teaches you and I a wonderful, powerful principle. And that is bad things do happen to good people. Just because you're saved and Holy Ghost and belong to First Baptist of Glen Arden doesn't mean that bad things doesn't happen to you. He's a good man, but something bad happened to him. Bad things do happen to good people. You can be saved and you can be a tither and still lose your job. You can be saved and Holy Ghost filled and still end up sick. You can be saved and love the Lord and read in your Bible 355 days of the year or 65 and you can still experience some bad things. Bad things do happen to good people. She's married to a good man but the good man dies which means there is no longer a provider or a protector. Remember in Old Testament the husband is the provider and the protector. There is no provider for her. There is no protector of her. She's in a bad situation. But to make matters worse, not only is he dead, but he left her with some bills. God help me right here. Ah, he leaves her in debt. Not because he's bad. It's because he believed that when he got out of seminary, he would have got called to a church. And his first paycheck, he would have paid off the loan. But before he got out of seminary, debt came by and snatches the life out of him. And he dies. And now the creditor have sent her a letter in the mail saying that they are on their way to take her sons into slavery. All of us knows what it is to have a creditor calling us on our phone. All of us knows what it is to have a creditor who doesn't take into consideration our situation. All of us know some insecure, insensitive creditor who calls us or sends us an email and informs us that if we don't make a payment on that loan, if we don't make a payment on that mortgage, if we don't make a payment on that car, they come in to get our stuff. Well, if they come in to get our stuff, just imagine how this woman must be feeling because they're not coming to get her stuff. They come in to get her sons. It's one thing for them to take your stuff. It's another thing for them to take your son. That's a word for somebody. They can have my stuff, just don't take my son. Because if they take the stuff, I can get back some other stuff. But if I ain't got my sons, I can't produce no stuff. Come on. You've got to put, you've got to put value in the right place. My value is not in my stuff. My value is in my family. My value is in my savior. My value is in my strength. So if I lose it all and still got King Jesus, I got more than enough to start all over with. Is there anybody in here who said I can lose the stuff, but if I got strength, if I got joy, if I got the Lord, he can give me more stuff. Because check this out. The stuff don't make me, I make the stuff. Is there anybody in here? Say, neighbor, the car don't make me, the shoes don't make me, the house don't make me, the car don't make me. If I lose it all and I still got King Jesus, I got more than enough to start all over with. They come in to take her son. They come in to take her son. She's in a bad situation. She goes to the man of God and she explains her situation and the man, don't miss this, the man gives her a plan of action. She implements the plan that at the end of the text, she has an oil business. 
Y'all missed it. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. I wish I had some women in here. Touch your neighbor and start your own business. Come on. She, she got a whole business. She goes to the man of God. The man of God gives her a plan. Don't miss this. He said, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and then go to Jamaica. Okay, okay, y'all. Y'all gonna catch it on your way home. Uh, that's Jazzy Jazz version. Uh, come on. Don't miss this. Sell the oil. Pay your tithe. Oh, y'all missed it right there. Uh, 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 come on. Pay your tithe. Then pay your mortgage. And then hang out in Punta Canta. I wish I had somebody in here. God is going to bless you in such a way that you're going to have enough to take a vacation. Because some of y'all need a vacation. Where you at? Well, what, 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 what did Elijah say to the woman that makes a move from not having enough to having just enough to having more than enough? How does she make the best out of a bad situation? I'm glad you asked the question because the text is tailored to teachers. There's a couple of things the woman did to make the best out of a bad situation. First and foremost, the text is tailored to teachers that if you're going to make the best out of a bad or a difficult situation, You've got to properly evaluate your present situation. That's point number one. You've got to properly evaluate your present situation. Don't miss this. It's important. The woman, the co pastor, uh, the woman rather, has two situations. On the one hand, her husband is dead. On the other hand, the creditors are on their way to take her sons into slavery. Don't miss this. How many situations she got she's got two situations on one hand she's got a situation that is dead somebody said dead on the other hand she's got a situation that is not yet dead don't miss this on the one hand she got a situation she cannot change she loved him but he's dead he's fine but he's dead he was a good man but he's dead on the other hand the creditors are on their way to take her sons into slavery but they're not there yet okay y'all missed it okay uh, they are on their way but they're not there on one hand she's got a situation she cannot change but on the other hand she got a situation she got the power to change and listen if you gonna make the best out of a bad situation you got to properly evaluate what situation you gonna spend time and energy and resources in because if it's dead the only thing you can do is bury it you, you, don't, don't waste your time, don't waste your energy, don't waste your power on anything that is dead. And nothing is worse than sitting next to somebody who looks dead. So you might as well do a pew check and say, neighbor, do you look dead or are you really dead? Come on, I'm not trying to sit next to anybody who looks dead. That's why, that's why your mama taught you this prayer. You remember that prayer your mama taught you? Lord, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot and give me the wisdom or the strength to change the things I can and give me wisdom to know the difference between which one and life is too short and your time is too important and your resources is too few for you to spend all your energy on dead stuff I need about a hundred people in here who said my life is too short my joy is too important for me to be hanging out with anything that looks dead or smell dead You've got to properly, you've got to properly, you've got to properly evaluate your present situation. Here's number two. If you're going to make the best out of a difficult or a bad situation, you cannot be afraid to ask for help. Okay, touch it and say, this is where you come in. She has a bad situation and she goes to the man of God. And she said, my husband, your prophet, 
is dead. The creditors are on their way to take my sons into slavery. Can you help a sister out? That's my translation. And look what the man of the man of God does. He flipped the script on her. And he said, before I help you out, are you willing to help yourself? I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. Look what he says. He said, what is it you got in your house? Okay, y'all miss your cue right there. What is it you have in your possession? What kind of talent? What kind of skill? What kind of ability that you've got in your house? Look at the woman's attitude. I ain't got nothing. Look at her attitude. I ain't got nothing. If I had something, I wouldn't be up in here. I ain't got zero. I ain't got nothing. Look at her attitude. I ain't got... Uh, Come to think about it, wait a minute, back it up, roll back. Uh, I do have not much, but I do have a jar of oil. Y'all going to catch us on your way up. Tell your neighbor, say, that's the grace of God. You always have just a little that you can use. Uh, you ain't got a full tank of gas, but you ain't all the way empty. Come on up in here. You may not have steak, but you got peanut butter and jelly staggering. You may not have sin, John, but you're the thank God for casual corner. You may not have nine ways, but thank God for payless. You may not have a Mercedes, but thank God for your hoopty. You may not have a mansion, but thank God for your apartment. You're the thank God. You may not have all that you want, but you got all that you need. You got clothes on your back, roof over your head, shit on your feet. Yeah, yeah. You always got something. You you always got something. Tell your neighbor, say you always got something. There is always something left over. Thank God. There's always something left over. That's the grace of God. That He always leaves a remnant. He always leaves a little bit of oil. He always leaves a little bit of money in the checking account. You may not have all the million dollar you want, but you thank God you got enough to make it for the next 30 days. Who am I preaching to this morning? I got just and if you can't shout over just enough you ain't gonna shout over more than enough is there anybody in here who said this place is just enough I just got it just enough to make it to work and to church I ain't going to the gym I ain't going nowhere else I just got just he said he said he said he said what you got in your house don't be afraid your neighbor said neighbor now I know why I'm sitting next to you because you've been anointed to help me God come on say you got something in your possession you got a shoe you can't wear you got a dress you can't wear no more you got a car you ain't using no more you got some extra cash yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask for help. But here's number three. Here's number three. You're going to make the best out of a bad situation. You've got to properly evaluate it. Uh, number two, you can't be afraid to ask for help. But number three, you've got to be willing to involve the community. Did y'all see that? Uh, e Elisha said to her, go to the neighbors, the community. And ask them if you can borrow some vessels. And don't just borrow a few. Are you all in the Bible? Okay, do I have a minute to just unpack that? Because Pastor Jenkins, it amazes me that she is already in debt. And the man of God tells her to go borrow. That's putting her more in the, Oh God, are you? Yeah. Go borrow. I'm already strapped. I'm already paying 18% on a card. I already got student loan. I already behind in the mortgage. You telling me to go borrow vessels? And the only reason I'm in this situation is because my good man had taken out a loan. 
listen, look, look what the man of God tells her. It's not that you're bowing, it's who you're bowing from. Okay, y'all missed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, go bow from your neighbor, not your neighbor. Say, you my neighbor. Yeah, yeah. He said, bow from some people who knows your situation so when you cannot repay them they ain't gonna take you to court because they know your situation your problem is not that you're borrowing is you're borrowing from the wrong people because your neighbor ain't gonna add interest to your loan i wish i had somebody in i wish i had somebody is there anybody in here who grew up in mississippi or alabama or grew up in south carolina and every now and then your mama ran out of sugar or she didn't have enough flour she didn't send you to the grocery store she can afford going to the grocery store but she said child put your robe on I want you to go across the street and tell mama so and so that I need some sugar is there anybody in here who knows that you made it on bowels pieces because God blessed somebody and that person bless you with something he said you've got to involve the community Unity. In other words, you can't make it by yourself. Pull your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, this is a color purple to morning. We can't make it by ourselves. Me and you will never part. Come on, say, I need you and you need me. And the only reason you're making it this morning is because God used somebody to bless you. You ought to thank God for church. You ought to thank God for community. You ought to thank God for neighborhood. You ought to thank God that God uses some people to bless you even when you can pay them back he uses them to bless you if you're going to make the best out of a bad situation you've got to evaluate your present situation you cannot be afraid to ask for help you've got to involve the community but when you've done all of that here's the bonus point you got to trust God to make up the difference in your your life. God bless you. Thank you for having me. But snap five at your neighbor and say when you've done all you can just stand. Stand on the promises of God. Stand on the will of God. Stand on the joy of God. When you can't do anything, stand. Cause he may not come when you want him, but he's always I said he's always I said he's always on time. Come here, come here, no, stay right here. You got two more minutes. Pull your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, he's always on time. He's Jehovah Jireh, he is your provider. He's Jehovah Shalom, he is your peace. He's Alpha and he's Omega. He's an on time, I said he's an on time. He's an on time God, yes. Yes, yes. Somebody high five your neighbor say he's an on time God. Go ahead, high five him. Woo! On time. 